Hey everyone, Joel here again, and welcome to the second episode of the Explorer Zone. If you missed our last episode on aquaponics, you can find the video and the activity sheets on our website, sciencemill.org. Today, we're gonna to be exploring the physics of motion and the power of simple machines. The incredible ball machine is located in the science and art park here at the science mill. Just follow the sound. Inside, there's lots of different paths the balls can take and a lot of different instruments for them to bump into along the way. You can even pick the sound you want to make by controlling where the ball lands. While it looks wildly complex, it's actually made up of simple machines. Things like levers and pulleys. Crazy contraptions like this are sometimes referred to as Rube Goldberg machines. We'll talk more about who Rube was later on, but now let's meet Kevin from Variants Design who can tell us how they designed and built this incredible ball machine. Thank you, Joel. Uh, yeah, so the ball machine um, is a redux of a, an original ball machine that was here at the Science Mill that become a little weathered and um, uh, was in need of uh, some attention. So the uh, goal was to um, use what we could from the original machine while creating a new experience that was more in line with a lot of other exhibits at the mill of a more of immersive experience. We were able to use a lot of the track system that was uh, part of the original ball machine but with that came some difficulties. We were able to piece a lot of it together in new ways, but had to be constantly conscious of our pitch and angles to keep the balls going as we liked. And um, then we wanted to um, make it feel like you were part of the machine more or inside of the machine, so to speak. The machine actually awakens uh, via an optical sensor that you pass by in this um, horseshoe-shaped configuration. And that triggers the mechanical arger that raises the balls to a high point of the track system and then distributes them via a series of flip gates that uh, bring it, the balls to all four corners of the exhibit, which allows our guests to trigger the balls um, through a skateboard uh, tail flip, if you will. That releases the balls and sends them through, uh, throughout the maze. We also wanted to kind of capture the, the sonic possibilities of the, the machine. So we incorporated um, a host of um, instruments that we had, uh, including some acoustic drums and cymbals, uh, some xylophones, um, we made kind of a cascading metal uh, structure that the balls uh, kind of cascade down and kind of aids in this cacophony of sound that the, the ball machine creates when it's in, in full swing here. We also have a pulley system that allows the guests to raise the balls up manually to a high point uh, and send those balls down a giant loop-de-loop -loop and using teamwork with another guest who can control a giant flip of the loop-de-loop -loop with a giant wheel can send that ball to a enormous wind chime and cymbal structure that again creates a lot of sound of the ball machine. One of the challenges um, we experienced with building the ball machine was having it um, all the balls return to the starting position, so to speak. So uh, another problem we had had with the original ball machine was being it that it's an outside experience, we had a lot of problems with leaves falling into the machine, uh, different tree limbs and stuff that would clog the machine and require constant maintenance. So we wanted to be able to address that with the new machine and we were able to do that in conjunction with keeping this perpetual motion of the machine through a series of planes and slopes that not only let the leaves and debris pass through the machine 
and not prohibit its function, as well as allowing the balls to all return to the central auger that keeps things going. As you can see, the ball machine is a series of simple machines. When put together, creates a very complex machine. Remember when we mentioned Rube Goldberg? He was a quirky engineer, inventor, and artist, and a major source of inspiration for the incredible ball machine. As part of his job as a newspaper cartoonist, Goldberg drew comic strips showing overly complicated machines performing a relatively simple task. These eventually became what he was best known for and can now be found in many games, movies, television shows, and even museums like ours. To build your own Rube Goldberg machine, you'll need some simple machines. Amber has some waiting for us up in the learning lab. Hi, I'm Amber, the Director of Education at the Science Mill. I've got some examples here that will help us understand how simple machines work. A simple machine is, to put it simply, a machine that uses energy to perform work. By harnessing the energy of motion, they make our work easier, like helping us move heavy loads. There are six types of simple machines, so let's get started. Our first simple machine is a wheel and axle. It's made up of a round disc with a rod through the middle. When force is applied, the wheel and axle both rotate, creating torque and momentum. That helps move things without extra friction, slowing us down. Gears are a form of wheel with interlocking teeth. Force can be multiplied from one gear to the other as they turn. Next up, we have an inclined plane. This is any surface that has a low side that slopes to a higher side. It takes a lot of energy to lift objects up against gravity. Pushing a load up an inclined plane takes less force than lifting it straight up. It just takes a little bit more distance to get there. At the top, potential energy, the energy of position, can be stored, then converted into kinetic energy, the energy of motion, to help bring the load back down. An example here We've created it going the opposite way, which you would want to use in your ball machine or in your Rube Goldberg machine. By increasing the slope of your incline plane, you can also increase the amount of potential energy available, thereby creating more kinetic energy. A lever is composed of a bar and a fulcrum. A fulcrum is the pivot point where the lever can redirect a force. When a force is applied to one end of the lever, the opposite end will pivot onto the fulcrum and lift the load with the output of that force. By putting the load closer to the fulcrum, you can reduce the force needed to lift it. A pulley is made from a wheel with a divot where a rope can sit. These are used to lift and lower heavy objects by redirecting the force exerted on the rope. When a force pulls the rope downward, it turns the wheel and helps lift the object on the other end up. Pulleys can show Newton's third law of motion. Each action has an equal and opposite reaction. A screw is a cylinder with an inclined plane wrapped around it, called a thread. By redirecting a force up and down, screws can help tighten items together or push them apart. Finally, we have the wedge. This is one simple machine not used in the incredible ball machine. A wedge is a triangular shape with a thicker side that tapers to a smaller point. Wedges are often used to split things apart. Force is applied to the thick end and gets directed downwards to the point and out into the object it is resting on. When you put two or more simple machines together, that creates a complex machine. Like the ball machine, scissors are a complex machine. They are two wedges put together to create a complex machine.
Now we challenge all of you at home to create your own complex machine. You could build a ball maze like the incredible ball machine or something that performs a simple task like a Rube Goldberg machine. Let's get you started with a few ideas that might help make your machine a little bit more fantastic. Here are some examples of some household items you may have lying around that can help get your ball machine started. The most important thing is you gotta have something that creates motion. So, some ideas are some really great toy cars you may have lying around. Balls are always a good thing. They roll, they move. Marbles, hockey pucks, anything that kind of mimics that wheel and axle motion can be used to create an amazing ball machine. So you wanna make sure that you have planes or tracks for your objects to move across. So you wanna make sure that you are creating systems that will allow your objects to move across, some that might wanna move through, or maybe some that could switch to where something could fall at the very end. Remember, you can be as creative as you want, just use anything you have around your house. Any surface can actually be an inclined plane. Now remember, the more you raise the plane, the more you increase the potential energy, thereby allowing it to convert into even more kinetic energy, providing more momentum. You can incorporate any building blocks that you have at home. Legos, connects are great because you can create motion with them. You can also utilize anything. Books are a great stacking object, but you wanna be able to create something that's fun, entertaining for you and your family. Remember, the most important thing in a ball machine or a Rube Goldberg machine is that you are creating a series of reactions happening over and over and over again. That's what increases the excitement and it makes it a lot more fun. Please remember to send all of your amazing designs to us at here at the Science Mill. Go on ahead, you can email them at programs at sciencemill.org or you can feel free to tag us in anything you post on Instagram or to your own Facebook page. If you need a little more inspiration, you can find some of our favorite examples on our website, www.sciencemill.org and check out our Explorer Zone for more fun examples of Rube Goldberg machines and other exhibits here at the Science Mill. All types of machines, whether big or small, industrial or commercial, are composed of simple machines that use the laws of motion to help us get the work done. Take this wheelbarrow. It combines a wheel and axle and a lever to create a complex machine. There are many careers out there that need to understand simple machines. One career that designs complex machines is mechanical engineering. Professionals in this career might design components for spacecraft, cars, or airplanes. Every design a mechanical engineer executes has to start with a solid plan first. Another career that involves a lot of drafting and planning beforehand is an exhibit designer. They design the exhibits that fill museums and art galleries. They may need to find ways to move and display heavy objects safely or create hands-on spaces that are easy for visitors of all ages to use. And sometimes, they're creating a Rube Goldberg machine from scratch using only household objects. Exhibit designers aren't the only ones having fun on the job, though. A career that utilizes physics at every part of their job is a roller coaster designer. Using these skills of structural, mechanical, and electrical engineering, roller coaster designers harness physics to create rides that are not only exhilarating and fun, but also safe for us to ride. This takes a deep understanding of physics and how forces can affect the body. All right, that's all for this week. Head over to the Explorer Zone at sciencemill.org and find our career connection guide and a PowerPoint that helps you locate the simple and complex machines you already have around your house. And don't forget the Explorer Zone Challenge. Send us a video of your incredible complex machine to programs at sciencemill.org and we'll feature some of our favorites in next week's episode. And for all the adults out there, check out what a real engineering firm did for their very own Rube Goldberg Challenge. Our friends over at Silicon Labs in Austin created a machine with 130 devices. 
All of this and more online. As always, thanks for joining us. You can find us on Facebook Live each Tuesday and on our website under the Explorer Zone tab. We'll see you next week.